There's no better time to talk about the Mac than when you're stuck at home in quarantine with COVID. Now, if you're thinking, Quinn, you look pretty good for having COVID. Well, thank you. It's called acting. <laughs> Over the years, I've shown dozens of free and open source apps for the Mac, but not everything good in life is free. You've spent hundreds, more than likely thousands of dollars for this machine, so it's time to put up or shut up. Pay a couple bucks for a good app. I am going to show you some of my favorite utilities for Mac, and all of them are under 10 bucks. First up, you know that amazing widget for iOS and macOS that shows the battery status of all your devices, your AirPods, your Apple Watch, and more? Yeah, well, I lied. It's not actually on the Mac, but you can add it with a third-party application called Batteries. Not only do you have the ability to add basically the same looking widgets that you have on iOS, but there's also a menu bar icon if you prefer that instead, which I do. So I can click it and see the battery uh, percentage of my Mac, which is 0% because this is an iMac. <laughs> I can see my iPhone, which is charging, my Magic Keyboard, my Magic Trackpad, my AirPods, and more. Your Apple Watch, whatever device you have paired on your iCloud account will show up here just like it would on your iPhone, and it's pretty amazing. But you can also add notifications. So let's say if my AirPods dip under a certain percentage, well, they can notify me about that event. This is really great and even extends beyond the functionality that you get with the standard battery widgets on iOS. It's fantastic. Next up is the way I prefer to consume my news via RSS with Reader. RSS is making a comeback and many websites are now once again displaying the entire article via RSS, which is fantastic because you can consume your news in the way you want with the fonts and the spacing and the styling that you prefer without ads and comment sections and tracker links. It's just a nice, clean, blank slate. Basically, you find the websites that you want to follow, and you can do news websites or you can do social media websites as well. They're all populated into a big old list, and you can subcategorize them into folders. So here are all of my Apple sources. I can go and drill down into specifically one of those, or I can go to a category, Salt Lake City, which is uh, utilizing multiple local newspapers to try and find me the best articles, the best face lotions of 2023. See, you can't get around sponsored stuff, even in the news. But what I really like about this is that it allows you to just drill through efficiently all of your news. It's quick and easy. You don't have to deal with jumping from one website to the other. It's a great way to consume everything that you need to know in an efficient and quick way. Because everyone likes the news, but no one really likes the news. That's where Reader comes in handy. Okay, this next app is actually free if you download it via the web, but if you get it via the Mac App Store, it's three bucks, and that helps support development for this app that has been around for 20 years called Grand Perspective. There's a lot of sexy new apps out there that help you free up disk space, but I think none do a better job than Grand Perspective, which is ugly, but really, really good because it just gives you a tree map of whatever directory you choose to scan. So I've chosen to scan my home folder, which includes a bunch of stuff, all of my documents, my local library, which will store all of my Xcode stuff. There's just a lot of stuff in here. And I can see a visual representation of these files with these blocks. The larger the block, the larger the file. So my biggest file by far is, perhaps unsurprisingly, photoslibrary.photoslibrary, which is 15.6 gigs. But I have other files here that are a couple gigs as well. And then I can even drill down into much smaller areas. And what I can do is I can reveal those in the Finder, or I can quick look them right from the app, which is pretty cool. I can open them as well. And I can even focus in and out to get a good idea of how my data is being visually represented on the disk. So for example, I've selected a file here and I can see that down at the bottom of the window is img underscore 0003 dot JPEG. Okay, this is part of the core simulator. So this is a, a sample file that's built into Xcode. But what I can do is I can draw my focus out and you see that little white square that gets bigger and bigger and bigger? That's going to the parent folder. So it's going backwards on your disk to get a bigger and bigger kind of perspective, a grand perspective of where things are allocated on your disk. But what I really like about Grand Perspective is it's not just for deleting files. You can use this on anything. I can go into my iCloud Drive and scan it, and it gives me a visual representation of the files that are taking up the most room in this area that I have chosen to scan. So it's not purely for deletion. It's to help you see where your space is on your disk and what is important and what you can get rid of. Next up is Radio Silence. This is an application level firewall for your Mac. And there are a lot of apps that do exactly the same thing as 
as this. The most famous by far is Little Snitch, but there are many apps that are even free and open source that do the same thing. So why do I choose to use a paid app, Radio Silence? Well, it's because the UI is fantastic, it's crazy simple to use, and uh, it's just a force of habit. I've been using it for a couple of years now. This is one of the first apps I install on my Mac because the reality is there are a lot of apps that will try to send home analytics data and device ID info and a bunch of stuff that I just don't want sent and developers didn't ask and so they don't get to send it. So I can go in here and block applications manually if I know that I don't want that app to communicate with anything on the outside. But where this app is handy is that there's a network monitor. This keeps a log of all of the requests that are coming in and out of your Mac. And you can see, not only does it show applications like Safari, but it also shows helper demons and a bunch of stuff that are uh, running in the background. Device agents that are, you know, not really uh, uh, made known to you as a user. Not only can I click the side to see what these are, where they're going, and who they're communicating with, sidecar relay is, is for passing off. So this is the Mac addresses of my other local devices here on the network. But there are instances where um, these apps go out to the web and I might not want that to happen. So if I don't, I can just say block and then it gets added back to this firewall list that I can choose to turn on or off. And that's basically all Radio Silence does. It's really simple, but it just gives you control about what things on your computer are communicating with the greater world wide web. What? COVID. An app that I've talked about previously on this channel is Cheat Sheet. You can hold down the command key and it'll pop up this page that basically shows you all of the shortcuts at your disposal. This is a great app, but it's one that I think is bested by a paid app called Palette. This creates a command palette within the active application and window that you're utilizing. A command palette is something that you're probably very familiar with if you use VS Code or um, a bunch of uh, text editing applications. It basically gives you at your kind of control at your fingertips, all of the commands that are possible within the application that you're currently in. And it basically does this by scraping the menu bars of all of the options and it also displays to you their current hotkeys so that you can learn those as well in the future, which is similar to the application I just showed you. Now you might be thinking, well, hold on, Quinn, this is already in the help menu bar. You can search for a bunch of stuff in here. And that's true. But depending on the application you're in, Palette can get a lot more powerful. So for example, I can search doorbell because I know that's something that I've searched uh, several weeks ago. I can go to uh, DIY chat room and talk about a, do a doorbell transformer VA rating. <laughs> this is something that is deep within my history from the prior weeks um, that is, is older than December 23rd and isn't something that's accessible unless I go into the history from within Safari. But Palette is able to scrape all of that data and information, which is pretty cool. Now, depending on the application, you can get crazy with what uh, you're able to do. Um, I just click translate here and uh, it's gonna translate this page. Now this is something that I could, yeah, I could go up here and use the mouse to do that, but I just did it via the keyboard in a fraction of the amount of time. And many apps, especially ones that are designed for creative use like Photoshop and Illustrator and what have you, um, have a lot of stuff in their menu bars and being able to use palette is fantastic because again, you can go into sub menus and hierarchies if you don't remember the exact command that you're searching for, which you would need if you were using the help menu. Palette is really cool. It's not free and it does basically do something that your Mac already does. But once you use it for a little while, it becomes pretty indispensable. With that said, if you use Raycast or Alfred, there are workflows that are uh, basically allow you to, to emulate the same functionality for free. So that may be worth investigating. If you weren't convinced by Paletro, I'm just now realizing it's probably called Paletro, because you like to physically take your cursor and go up to the menu bar, well then you might wanna try an app called Menuware because it does exactly what it sounds like. See my cursor right here? I'm gonna hit a keyboard command and boom. Now I have the menu in its entirety anywhere for Safari. I can even go into the Apple menu as well. This is a really fantastic way if you're in a creative application and you know your menu system to be able to do it where your cursor is already and not have to return to the menu bar at the very top of your screen. This is particularly good if you have a really high uh, resolution or large display and if you're using a multi-monitor setup and you're on a pane or a, on, a, on a monitor where the menu bar is not active on that display. So 
it's a really great way to spawn that menu anywhere, but it can even do a little bit more because if I use a different uh, keyboard shortcut, not only does it show you the menu for the active window that you're in, Safari, but it can even let you choose another application that's open. So he, hey is my email client. I can go to hey, file, and new message and check it out. Now I have created a new message from within an application that's not even the active application on my Mac. It's really pretty cool and quite handy, especially for three bucks. This next app is probably the app that I use with the most frequency and install in every single new Mac I set up first. It's called PDF Squeezer and I love it. So I've got here on my desktop a PDF that I have scanned uh, myself at a, at a book scanner and it's quite massive at 738 megabytes, okay? What I wanna do is shrink this. All you have to do is take it and I drag it into this window and then I can choose my compression, be it medium, strong, or light. I'm gonna do a medium compression here. And in the background, it's going to start taking that PDF and compressing it down from 700 megabytes or whatever it is to something much smaller and much more tenable. <laughs> it's done already. So 14.4 megabytes, it has reduced the size of the file by 98%, which is massive. And I can even do a side-by-side -side comparison to make sure that the loss in quality is not that noticeable. And if it is, then I can change my compression. That's pretty amazing. Not only can I do that, but I can actually extract the images automatically from the entire PDF to a separate folder, which is amazing. And I can even convert it to bitmap if I want to protect the images that are present in a PDF. I can go into here in the settings and I can change a bunch of different stuff. How much I want to compromise on um, uh, image quality or how much I want the minimum resolution to be. If I wanna remove the images altogether, if I want to just strip the metadata but leave the images the same. This app has a lot of functionality if you need it to, but it also is just really simple. If you just go, here's big PDF, give me little PDF. Has your finder ever looked like this? Yeah, so does mine all the time. So close all those windows, okay? Because it's time to yoink it. Trust me on this one, okay? <laughs> so <clears throat> all you need to do is pick up a couple of files that you need to do something with, okay? I'm gonna drag them over here to the side and drop them onto Yoink. Now they will stay persistent on the side of the screen for as long as I need them. I can add new files to Yoink or I can get rid of files by deleting them. Not only can I do that, but I can split these piles apart if I don't wanna move them simultaneously or to the same location. I can quick look to preview them. And then once I've gone to the location where I want to move these files, I just drag them out of Yoink and to the destination that they need to go. Not only can you do this with files, but you can do it with other stuff like text and URLs. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna copy this paragraph of my script, okay? I'm gonna go over into Yoink and I'm just gonna push uh, Command V to paste. And now check it out, it's created a new text document with that text that I pasted. I can move that into my downloads and now I've got a text clipping. It's super easy, super simple. That is Yoink and it works really, really well. Now I know what you're thinking. I've talked about an app very similar to Yoink in the past, and that's true. Dropzone is actually less expensive and has a lot more features. It works exactly the same. I pick up this PDF, I can drag it into Dropzone, I can put it in the bar so that it's separated from this other item, or I can take this file and drag it on top of something that I wanna have stacked up. Then when I'm ready to act on it, I just take this and I drag it back out, and there you go. It is added to my desktop. It's very, very, very simple, but you can go even further with this. So I've got a screenshot of my signature here, okay? I can actually go into Drop Zone and I can upload that to Imgur. It's going to uh, scroll a little bit and now that's already been uh, uploaded. I have it uh, automatically pasted to my clipboard. I can open it, paste the URL and there's a direct link to the web with my signature, which I don't know if that was such a good idea. Anyway, Drop Zone allows you to do a lot more stuff too. Not only can you put stuff inside of Imgur, but you can install applications. You can uh, upload stuff to Google Drive. You can shorten URLs or airdrop stuff. It's really, really powerful and frankly has a lot more functionality than Yoink. So if you're looking for that, I think Drop Zone is an excellent option. But if you want something that is just quick and easy and works all the time and super seamless, it's pretty hard to beat Yoink. They're both really good though. Have you ever needed to type the same thing over and over and over again, like an address or a phone number, and it just gets exhausting? Yeah, 
Well, that's where this next app comes in. I'm gonna type colon w addy and boom, my work address has been posted instantly. Now you might think, well, hold on, this is already built into Mac OS. And yes, it is by way of text replacements. So for example, I can type OMW and now it says on my way, that's a default. And they actually sync over iOS. The problem with text replacements is that they only work in uh, most of Apple's own apps. For example, none of them work in uh, Microsoft Office, which is like a pretty big do. Um, the other problem with them is they don't have any functionality beyond replacing a text string with a text string. This app, uh, Rocket Typist, absolutely does. So I'm gonna go into the snippet editor and I am going to show you some of the stuff that I can do. So for example, if I type colon D date, it is going to replace whatever I've typed with the current day and date in the formatting that I have predefined it paste as, which is pretty cool. I can also go even further with this and add a form. So for example, if I type colon HBD for happy birthday, it's going to ask me for a name. I'm gonna type Jason. And then it's going to paste, dear Jason, I just wanna reach out, blah, blah, blah. And it even has a signature card that's in the font and the font formatting that I would like it to be in. Rocket Typist allows you to do tons of crazy powerful stuff. You can get crazy with your formatting and your rich text and your variables. You can have drop down menus that prompt you for options. I mean, it's just a really, really, really crazy powerful app. But it's not as crazy powerful as applications that are much more expensive like Text Expander. Uh, Text Expander is a great app as well too. I just have always found the interface quite confusing and it's way more expensive. This is a one-time purchase and it's great and it works really well. Rocket Typist, it's almost dark outside. This last app is also probably one of my favorites and one that I install on almost every Mac. It's been around for a few years and it hasn't received an update in probably two, but it doesn't really need it other than looking kind of ugly. Here it is. It allows you to create a reminder automatically and very quickly by dragging this away from the menu bar. The further away I drag it, the more into the future the reminder is. So I'm gonna do one hour and 20 minutes. I let go and this prompt pops up. Now I can choose to add a description or not, but I'm going to, I'm gonna call it, um, go eat dinner. I push enter and boom, that reminder has been created. It starts counting down from my menu bar so I can see where things are in place, which is quite handy. It tells me the time that that's going to be completed. But what's really great about this is that it also allows you to sync those events to Apple Reminders. So now inside of Apple Reminders, it will tell me go eat dinner at 6.38. It shows up as a task that I need to complete. It's synced on my watch and my phone and everywhere else. This is what I really like about Just Timer. There's a lot of cool handy menu buyer timer options, but they always are self-contained. This syncs with Apple Reminders, which, I mean, how do you beat that? And then, by the way, you saw that I just checked it off before I closed the app and it disappeared because it's been completed because they sync. There's symbiosis between Reminders and Just Timer. It's great. Uh, I'm running out of breath and energy and sun. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, don't like, don't dislike it. I have COVID. Be nice. As always, stay snazzy. My brain is so fried. I'm done with this one. <laughs>